Hello web developers, thanks for watching my video. In today's tutorial I'm going to show you 7 easy but awesome CSS tricks step by step. Ok, number 1 disable link clicking. Did you know that you can disable link clicking by using CSS? So the first thing I'm going to do is create a link that is going to go to google.com <laughs> and now I'm going to click on it just to show you that it works and now I'm going to add new CSS property A which targets all links and I'm going to put pointer event none. Now you see when I click on the link, it doesn't work anymore. When an image is scaled up or down its original dimensions, by default the browser will attempt to apply aliasing to the image to prevent distortion. But sometimes that can be a problem as the pictures can start looking pixelated. I'm adding a simple QR code here, just to give you an example. And I'm going to duplicate that below and give the second QR code a class of optimized. The next thing we need to do is to write img, which is a CSS property for images, and inside it scale down the QR code so they start getting pixelated. They're not currently too bad, but you'll see the difference as soon as I write the next property to the optimized image. So I'm going to write to the optimized QR code class image rendering and I'm going to put pixelated. And if you look down, you will see that the one on the right side is much, much sharper than the one on the left. Target specific file extension. This trick is really cool and simple. So I'm going to create a few links and inside I'm actually going to link a fake PDF. So I'll call it mybook.pdf and I'm going to say download free book. I'm going to copy the link a few times. And now we start writing the CSS just to make it a little bit better. I will display the links as block. So they're on another line and I'm going to put the font family as Roboto. Give the links a color of black. And a little bit of padding. Now we can add an icon or an image, but in this case I'm going to use Font Awesome just to make things a little bit easier. So I'm going to add Font Awesome now. And I'm going to start writing the CSS property, which only targets PDFs. So any link with a file extension of PDF will be targeted. And I'm going to create a pseudo uh, property which is before, add my font awesome and for the content I will go to fontawesome.com and find a PDF icon. Make sure you copy the Unicode. And to add Font Awesome into your CSS, uh, all you have to do is forward slash under Unicode that we just copied. And you can see that we've got the PDF icon below. So I'm gonna clear things up a little bit with margin to pixels, so it looks slightly better. And now you see if I remove the PDF and put PNG instead, you'll see that the icon no, no longer appears. 
So I'm only targeting PDFs, but you can do that for other file extensions. Number four, background clipping. I love this one. This is a really, really easy but cool effect that you can do with CSS. So I'm, first of all, I'm gonna create a div with the class of clip text, and then I'm just gonna write hello world inside. I'm gonna do some simple styling now. For the body, I'm gonna put the background color to be black. Uh, the text color white and the phone family I'm gonna go for Roboto again let's give it a font size of 8m which just makes it a little bit bigger so we can see and I'm gonna every, and I'm gonna center align the text the next step is to style the clip dash text class And inside that, I'm gonna give it a background image and um, I found this image on gimpy.com. Uh, I just put gradient and I found this really cool looking image. So I'm gonna copy the URL and paste it. And we get that really cool background below. Now all we left is that we put background, size, cover and we need to position the background as well. So background position, center. Now I'm going to start writing the WebKit vendor prefix which is WebKit and then I'm going to put background clip to text. I'm also going to put a color to transparent and that's everything really simple but cool effect number five let's create a sticky bar for this one we're going to need some text so i'm going to add a par paragraph and i'm going to use this zombie ipsum website I'm gonna copy some text, paste it into my paragraph tag, and I'm just gonna go ahead and actually I'm gonna copy another two paragraphs just to make it look slightly different. I'm gonna paste and then I'm gonna go ahead and select everything and then copy and paste a few times. The dummy text is only for creating the scroll. So the next step is to add a div with the class of sticky. And inside that div you can say you can write absolutely anything. So I'm just gonna write this is a sticky bar. And the next step is to style the sticky class. So I'm going to do some basic styling again. So on the body I'm going to put font family as Roboto. Oh, let's change it to later this time. I'm going to give it some padding of 40 pixels. That's left, top, right and bottom. And I'm going to give it margin zero. So you reset the body margin. Let's give the sticky bar a few properties. So I'm going to put div.sticky and inside that I'm going to make the bar background color to be this orangey color. Also I'm going to put the color to be white so we get that contrast. 
I'm gonna up the font size on the whole body to 1.2 m's so we can see slightly better and I'm gonna give the bar padding of 20 pixels which is again left, top, right and bottom. The last thing that we need to do is to position the bar as sticky and it doesn't work yet but that's because we need to add another property. I'm also gonna add the vendor prefix uh, for WebKit because I'm using Chrome. So WebKit that's sticky. And the last property that we need, which is really important, is top zero. So now that when I scroll, you will see that the bar is sticking to the top. Number six. Who needs Photoshop when you can do image filters straight in CSS? I'm going to go to unsplash.com to find an image that I can use. And I quite like this boat by Vlad. Goras. I'm gonna copy the URL of the image and I'm gonna use that for the project. Here I'm creating my image element and I'm gonna go straight to the CSS. So I'm targeting all images and I'm gonna scale the image down a little bit so it fits better on the screen. And the next thing I want to do is add a filter. This filter is grayscale and one. So just like Photoshop, you can do filters with CSS. I want to show you a few more filters. So I'm going to do image on hover. And I want to uh, invert the colors of this image. So it's really simple again, filter, invert, one which means fully inverted and when I hover over the image you can see that all the colors are inverted. There is also a bunch of other filters that you can use. I'm gonna paste them below. Some of the filters are blur, brightness, contrast, hue rotate, invert, opacity, saturate and sepia. Make sure you experiment with them. And last but not least Unicode classes. I've copied some Unicode MOGs, but I'm going to show you where to get them from. So if you go to this website, which is unicode.org, MOGs, charts, full MOGs, dash list.html, you can find all sorts of MOGs that you can copy and use for this project. See, copy paste, and the MOG appears. So I'm going to stick with the three MOGs that I've already selected. And I'm going to create a div with the class of the first MOG, which is, I guess, the P sign. Peace. And I'm going to copy this div and replicate it three times and just change the second one to coffee. I'm going to copy this div and replicate it below and just change it to this lightning icon. Okay, so far so good. You can see the icons on the left, they all appearing. So I want to see now whether I can actually style them. I'm going to give the body a font family of Montserrat, font size of 1.2, sorry, 1.4 M's, just so we can see better. And I'm going to do the font weight to be bold. Everything looks fine. So I'm going to copy one of the MOGs now, or Unicode, and I'm going to use that to style the piece, the first div. So 
color blue and you can see already we're having the color blue and I'm gonna replicate this and use the coffee mug now coffee mug class and I'm gonna put the colors brown and as you can see it reflects straight away and for the lightning I'm gonna copy the lightning class and just change the color to be yellow or, or orange you should definitely use dime prediction Thank you for watching this video, I hope you liked it, make sure you subscribe, like and comment below.